Hi everyone, look where we are. Let me see who's joined me this morning. Let me just double check. We've got five minutes before we officially start and then I'll um, kind of explain how the day is going to work. Hi Noel, hi Fliss, how are you going? Hi Tracy, hi Diane, Crystal, Doreen, hi Anne, hi Dawn, Cheryl, Catherine, Derek and Amy, hi Dee, hi Leslie, Dana, Hadrian, Ava and Michael. I noticed there was one person here, Leslie, I think from uh, Australia. This is the Southern Aurora, look at this. I'm just going to back up and have a look at this one. But we're uh, standing in the sheds and there's trains surrounding us. And here, look, look at this beastie. The amazing Southern Aurora. Um, let me tell you a little bit about it. And there's some information boards here as well. Uh, so it says until April 62 if you wanted to travel from Sydney to Melbourne you had to change at Albury and I think that's because the gauges were different the um, there were different widths between the tracks all over the country no consistency so when building a railway system across the country it makes sense to have the measurement between the rails the same to simplify transport across the borders so yes what is gauge it was all about the gauge so the southern aurora uh, in 1962 was able to go from Sydney to Melbourne so who else has joined us hi Michael hi Virginia hi Heather hi Gregory Lorreen hi Mindy oh I'm gonna have trouble with your name is it Jada real and, and apologies if I've got that wrong hi Rhonda and good morning Susanna yes was anyone here on my tour yesterday? I couldn't see the chat. The chat just uh, totally cut out on me, so I wasn't able to, well, I was able to talk to you, but I couldn't see what you were saying back at me. <laughs> you could have said anything you liked. I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have been any the wiser. But I did read back through it later, and thank you so much for all your support. Uh, it, was, it was lovely to go back and read the comments later. <laughs> Hi Tariq and the bears. So I'm just going to have a quick wander around. We've got half an hour before we need to board the train that we're going to ride today. Oh, I've just seen something interesting. What's this one here? You worked on the spirit of progress, Susanna. Let's go back and have a look. Let's see. Spirit of progress. That's this one here. Look. There you go. I did. That's exactly how I felt, Dawn. I felt like I was talking to myself. It took me back to all those, to the very beginning when I was practicing before I was uh, accepted as a tour guide and doing those practice tours, just talking to the camera with no one on the other end. It's so comforting to have someone there on the other end to talk to. I just love that you're all there. Look inside this one. I'm just trying to find out what this one is. We've got this beautiful glasswork on the door here. And I'm getting the reflection on that, which is unfortunate, but I'm trying to figure out what those flowers are. Could be Waratahs, look in the etched glass work. And then here we are looking inside one of the cabins, one of the sleepers. That looks like, would that be a double in there? I'm guessing it possibly is. All right, it's ticked over time, so it's now 10.30 in Thirlmere, which is just outside Picton. Let me turn this around. Good morning, everyone. My name's Lynn. For anyone who hasn't met bef me before, I normally do tours in the Blue Mountains, which is to the west of Sydney. But today we've come down to a town called Thirlmere, a small town outside of Picton to the southwest of Sydney, to the New South Wales State Railway Museum, which is the largest collection, home to the largest collection of rolling stock in Australia. So I'm really excited to be able to bring you all these wonderful trains. I don't know an awful lot about them, so feel free to chime in and add to the conversation. Uh, Susanna, you asked what the temperature's like. It's going to be really warm today. It's very humid. Um, but before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge that we meet today on the traditional lands of the Dorug Nation and pay respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. All right, let's just turn this around. So at 11 o'clock, half an hour from now, we need to make our way to the platform to board the train. Nice warm day, short sleeves. Yes, exactly. Just try and catch up on some of the comments before we move on. 
So I'm standing in front of the 3820 here, which looks like it was a big old thing. Look at the big beast there. That's a technical term, big train. <laughs> as I said, if anyone has any knowledge of these trains as we have a look around, feel free to chime in. I'll just go give you headlines. I'm not if if you want to take photos, postcards of the actual plaques, please go ahead. But it basically says of the 3820, Rocket of the Rails, last work of steam art. Evoking beauty, speed and reliability, the C38 class were powerful in their economic engines. Now I'm admiring this lovely thing. Look at the woodwork, the panel work. And imagine this is a little bit different to uh, the way we get around these days, isn't it? Although I suspect that even back in the day, I might not have qualified to sit in this carriage. <laughs> and this one here is the state governor's car. So the state governor of New South Wales presided over the opening of the original Sydney to Parramatta Railway in 1855. And this was, this was what he used to get abound in. And we can see on this uh, reconstructed platform, we've got the old luggage wagons. And this is the old sleeping car, I guess, that the, the less privileged might have used. Although it's very dark, I'm not sure I can really see inside there. You can see that there's leather seats, not much else. Oh, there we go. There's a, there's a bed, there's a cabin. Old wooden carriage, needs a bit of love. They've got quite a lot of trains here, so they really don't, I guess, have the money to restore all of them. We can see through there, you get an idea of the extent of the collection. And I'm just trying to see if there's a way for me to go out and circle around as we uh, look around here. Thanks for the follow, D. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Poppy. Did I miss anybody? Hi, Katie and Corinne. Storm, hello there. Good morning. And Faith, Laurie. Thank you so much, Anne. Expected to reach 35 today. Off to the movies later. Yeah, that's a good, nice air-conditioned place to be. So many technical terms you can't keep up. <laughs> Big train? Yes. <laughs> all right. So I'm um, just trying to see. So they're not all lit up either. And I'm giving you the, like, the back end of the tour first of all, and then we'll get up the front where all the, the prestige stock is. So this one is called the Phoenix. Oh, it's not called the Phoenix. It just says from ashes, a new carriage. <laughs> so this one's been dressed up. You can see how it's been done up compared to the one behind it. There's, uh, it's been restored. All right, let's go down here and I'll circle back around and head back towards the main, main collection. And uh, we've already seen the steam train. It's already uh, in action, getting warmed up for us to, to board at 11.15. So we'll be making our way up to the platform at 11 and boarding at 11.15. I want to know what this is, though. What is this? It looks like a combi van. What is that? It's very cute, whatever it is. Oh, Susanna, your dad drove one of those? I may not get all your messages um, if there's a lot of conversation, but I'll try. All right, I'm going to peek in through the window. There's a little step that I can climb up on. One of the oddest little items in the collection is this rail pay bus. Where did it operate? It's a really interesting looking beastie, isn't it? Let's have a look. I'll get up on this, uh, get up on this step and see if I can see in. It definitely looks like a combi van. It just looks like a camper van in there. Very cool. All right, let's go this way. Oh, there's, lucky there's arrows painted on the ground. You could easily get lost in here, I reckon. Just before we head back that way, what have we got up here?
Hi, Corinne. And I just want to find out what this one is here. Hi, Joy. It's a rather lovely looking. Here we go. Australian Iron and Steel Limited. The Bronze Wing. And it's dedicated to the memory of an engine man, Don Drysdale, it says. Now don't climb on it. No, I won't. So this uh, operated in Port Kimberley, which was the steel town, iron and steel town. And there's the inside of the engine. And then up here we have a couple more engines just before I head back towards the main building. What's this one? Number 79, the saddle tank. No job too big. Imported during 1938, it became part of the extensive project to rebuild and upgrade Port Kembla's shipping and berthing facilities. Okay, so that's, that's what it was pulling behind it. And then this old thing looks like a bit of a beast, doesn't it? Look at that. And this one is an American diesel, 7921, US Army conscript. During 1943, the Australian War Cabinet approached the United States Army to provide diesel electric locomotives to work the new munitions factory near St. Mary's. St. Mary's is down my way, near Penrith just at the foot of the Blue Mountains. And there was an, um, a defence site there until very recently, which has now gone under for housing. Tough mudder, yeah, I think you're right, Rhonda. Oh, what did I miss? What are you daring Kate to do, Fliss? I feel like this is the naughty girl's corner. Hi, Mary Lou, how are you this morning? And anyone who I've missed who jumped on the chat when it was moving a little bit quickly, good morning. Thanks for joining this morning. And uh, we're having fun with trains. Here's this little thing again. Oh, that's awesome. Yes, definitely. I'd love to do the um, Indian Pacific, but it's a little bit expensive. Thanks for the follow, Heather. It does. That Exactly. It looks like a VW camper van. Exactly right. Or possibly with the shape of that front end, even a Citroen. All right, so here we go back through. They reckon there's 100 um, individual items of rolling stock in this big shed here. So obviously this one is uh, belongs to Shell and has something to do with fuel. I've done a couple of long trips through India, Fliss, and while it wasn't very comfortable, it was definitely a great way to see the country. Um, did we pass this engine before? I think we may have. Please don't climb. Is this a dare? Who was the naughty person that tried to tell me not to climb on something or tried to encourage me that I should? So the 1905... First across the harbour, okay, so the little engine that has seen it all. Known eventually as the Z-19 class, these locomotives were conceived to operate the heavy goods train of the 19th century. Let's have a look inside. How fun would it be to actually be up there and drive it? Yeah, I, I'm going to obey the rules, Tariq. I'm a good girl, mostly. And then we've got these sort of, uh, what would you call them, cargo? Possibly for timber or something. Let's see if it says on here what these ones were for. So from 1906, 1906 the steel S truck became the standard open wagon on the government network. Okay, so that's what this little one is. Cars, 
Corinne, that reminds me of uh, like scenes in films like um, Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, jumping on trains and, and all of that. They keep threatening a railroad strike here in the US. I don't think we appreciate how much we rely on railroads. Patrick Toomey did a tour in Banff with some trains going by. They move a lot of stuff for us still. Yeah, we're the same here as well. Virginia, the uh, trains, we rely on them quite heavily. In fact, I would rather stuff get moved by trains than by road. Living on a main highway, well, just off it, very close to the main highway that literally crosses the country. So I'd much rather freight got moved by rail than by road. So here we have a cargo type of truck. The ultimate biscuit tin. <laughs> ABV 7604, built in 1905, illustrates a style and functionality dating back to the dawn of government railways in the 1850s. So here we go. There's your, uh, your typical cargo wagon moving sayo biscuits and Monte Carlos and ginger nuts, all our favourites, all our favourite biscuits, scotch finger biscuits. Oh, this one looks interesting. Look at the logo. Train transport is no Tim Tam Sandy. No, train transport is definitely better by train. I, I agree. Ginger nuts. How long has it been since you've had a ginger nut, Susanna? Toothbreakers. So this is the 5910. Maybe we should investigate some of these old Arnott's biscuits for a tour, Susanna. I'm sure there'd be lots of uh, expats who'd love to know whether we still have certain of our old favourites. So this is the Mikado. English manufactured by a Peacock's best customer was a tough mob for North American steam engines to gain a toehold. And I'm just looking at the undercarriage. Who likes to see a train's undercarriage? Now I've got to keep an eye on the time. I need to start heading back up to the platform towards where we board in about 15 minutes from now. And uh, this one has a cow. Oh, Kings Kingston's a too good for this. All right, we've got a reflection on there. Let's get try and get this reflection out. So obviously we can tell by the uh, display what this carriage was used for. I still use trains a fair bit to get down to Sydney. It's uh, so much cheaper than uh, driving down. Uh, what does it say? Horse and strapper. The horse and strapper displayed in horse box KKG 1529 were kindly donated to the museum by the Australian Jockey Club. So there we go. So these were probably museum items at the Australian Jockey Club. I'm trying to find a spot where we're not getting a reflection. Oh, there we go. Maybe that works. All right, looking back up this way. Just trying to figure out what this one is beside me. It says it's built to carry more. It's a bit battered and bruised, this one. Look at it. So whatever was rolling around inside it, it did some damage to the outside of the, <laughs> the car. Okay, so this one here, the 1033. Look at the, what do you call that dome thing on the front? Is that where the steam builds up? Is that the boiler? 
See, I don't even know that. That's how little I know about trains. <laughs> Okay, so born out of a great rivalry of the late 19th century, the F351 class tank engines of the railways and tramways were to endure a tragic fall from grace that resulted in most being put on the market and the remainder confined to pottering around workshops and depots till the end of their days. How sad. Fliss, we're in uh, a small town called Thirlmere, T-H-I-R-L-M-E-R-E, -E -E, uh, which is outside Picton. Picton is just beyond Camden on the way down the Hume Highway, kind of towards the Southern Highlands. Does that orient? Does the map work for you? Thanks, Corinne. And uh, I'll, in, a, in about an hour, when we get to, the, when I get on the train later on, I'll tell you where I'm heading after this which is really exciting and it might be another tour opportunity look at this one this one's pretty we stopped and had coffee in Picton on the way down here so 20 minutes I've got 10 minutes before I need to be getting ready to go board so this one's called well, it must be a diesel, the mainline diesel pioneer, although not the very first diesel. 4001 and 19 classmates that followed wrought the legacy that mattered. A refined version of a classic Alco model, the 40 class was assembled in Canada by an Alco affiliate, the Montreal Locomotive Works. Another connection between Australia and Canada. There we go. Gee, that map's been playing up for people lately, hasn't it? I've seen lots of people on tours mention that the map hasn't been working for them on not just my tours, but um, other people's tours as well. It's windy. Can you hear the wind? It's really windy out here. All right. I think uh, we'll start heading. <laughs> yes, the copywriter did have a sense of humour. I'm loving some of those signs. So... In about 10 minutes, we need to head up in that direction towards the end of the platform, and that's where we'll be boarding the steam train. Hi, Takashi. Hi, Kay. Hi, Lee. Hi, Kathleen and Teresa. And anyone else I've missed, I apologise if I've missed you and haven't welcomed you along. Of course, everyone is welcome, and I thank you for being here. So this is the 6040. It's a big, big beast. Look at it. Look at the size of this thing. That is huge. Let's find out what this one is. We'll have a look. We'll admire its undercarriage as we walk. Look at all that machinery and stuff going on under there. Another technical term. Stuff going on. This is a beast. It's just getting up the steps and moving back from it. That's huge. Look at the size of it. Well, hi, Dan. Another guide joined us. Susanna and Dan are our guides along this morning so far that I've noticed. And if you guys aren't already following their channels, please go and find them and join them because they do fabulous tours. The last word in steam. So this is the Garrett. And it says it was an imaginative, articulated steam engine concept conceived in England by Herbert William Garrett in partnership with Bayer Peacock. Train time. Yes, it nearly is. Dan will be boarding that train very soon exciting stuff. I have a small young person along with me for the day and uh, I'm sure she's going to be very excited to get on board this train as well. All right, one last look down the line before we go in. Here's this big 6040. Look at it. What a beast. Now here's the mail van. This is where we're going to go in and have a look. 
This is really interesting. You can actually go inside this one. I just need to find the way in. There's a demonstration on the left, an educational demonstration on how STEAM works, which obviously I haven't done as I've demonstrated in the last 10-15 uh, minutes. <laughs> so we've got this engine here. And this shows the coal truck at the back. And we're going to go in and have a look at the mail train. And this plaque talks about sorting mail on the, on the move. Thank you, Russ. Love all the uh, contributions that correct me because I know nothing about trains. Tender, that's a tender, the coal tender. Perfect. So this is HKL 360. And this is the mail train. And it's got a little animation running, so we'll listen to it for a bit. Comes off at Goulburn, as well as Tarago to Queanbeyan, Canberra, and Bombala. Right. But they're bundled separately, I suppose. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, one bundle for each of the spur lines. And uh, Goulburn will also want the mail for stations between it and Yass. We'll be passing through those stations tonight, but we're expressed from Goulburn to Yass with no stops. You understand that? Yeah, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Roy. If we're passing through those other stations, why not stop for a couple of minutes and drop the mail off? Because we're on a rigid schedule, son. If we're late at the yes, we'll be late for every stop after that, and our timetable becomes our mess. The local train will take the mail down the line tomorrow during its regular run. Uh, the regular run. I Can't even see his lips so moving. The local train stops at those stations anyway. So it's more All right, I, I hear our train. train. Now think about this. Let's get the going. The New South Wales Railways has many hundreds of trains running on thousands of miles of track around the state at the same time. Okay, I can see the train. I can see it out through those windows up ahead. This the rest of my family. No idea where they are. Especially since they've got my ticket. <laughs> uh, we've got time, I'm sure, to just have a little look here. Oop. Small people underfoot. So this one is the 1709. And it says... It's the big wheeler was rolled out in style to become a scene stealer in the celebrations commemorating the 140th and 150th anniversaries of New South Wales Government Railways. There's a royal thing up there. Hi, Camilla. Hi, Tina. And... Apparently it took part in the first royal tour, the first reigning monarch to set foot on Australian soil. This, gut, this, this train played a part in getting her around the country. So this is that train carriage. You can see the, uh, the glassware and the, I guess that's the food warmer there. Little tassels on the blinds. You can see me? Okay, so we've just heard the announcement. I need to start making my way. Look, there's double bunks in there. And the, the dresser.
So that's where she would have been. Um, that looks. That chair looks very small for royalty. What do you think? Do you think that's accurate? <laughs> and there was meant to be a prison van somewhere around here, but I'm not sure where that got to. Might have missed that. We might get it later. She was very tiny, wasn't she, Susanna? So um, I still think I would have liked something a little bit comfier with perhaps a couple of arms on the side, you know. <laughs> All right, let's head towards this train. Time to get on the train. I can hear it. There's a playground over here for kids. And I guess the rest of my family's around here somewhere. Oh, there's a little train. There's a little train they're riding on. I wonder if they're on that, perhaps. Mini train rides. What a gorgeous day. Look at it. We've got beautiful clear blue skies. Here's our train, guys. Here we go. Just follow all the lost people. Yeah, exactly, Dan. Absolutely. That's exactly what you do. All right, here they come. There's my family. I found them. Little pink hat. Little pink hat is my granddaughter. Alexis. <laughs> All right, so what do we know about this train? It's a 3265. I'm going to see what I can find out about it. I'm sure there'll be some, some information about it up ahead. Hi, Valerie. Hi, DT. And of course, these people know to get off, don't they? <laughs> Okay, come on you guys, you know you've got to get off, right? Get on a bigger train. Okay, let's go and have a look at it, this train, and see if they've got some information about it. I'm sure they do. So these are the carriages. We've got three carriages. I think we're in carriage A. My guess is that that'll be up the front. We've got some lovely old train buildings here as well. Yeah, I was going to try and get to the, uh, go and try and find the information about that, Dan. I think it was the late 1800s. This was the name of the platform, the station that it used to run through, one of the stations on the line. Kurija. And this, this is just lovely. Look at the lovely Thirlmere train station. Say hello. No. <laughs> Choo -choo. Yeah, just follow the people. So the level crossing is closed. But here's the sign for train rides. Oh, hi, Mum. I didn't see you join the tour. Yep, Alexis is with us. And he's going to be checking tickets. I need to get...
He's got the tickets on his email yeah. there. Can you tell me what uh, name you booked in? S C H. I like the Thai pink. Can I have a look at your Thai pink? Yeah, we yeah. sell them up in the shop too. Oh, cool. Schroeder, yes. Okay, car A, which is the one right behind me here, the first one. Oh, right, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, no. Yep, wait for Opa. All right. I'm going to try and find out as much what I can about the 3265 engine. This is the signal box here, the old me signal box. Hi Pamela. What is it? I think we can look inside through the doorway. You want to come around here? Doorway? Yeah, through here, look. We won't go in there, we can just look inside. Let's go up here. You want to wait here? All right, we'll just wait here. Okay, come over here then. What did they say about not working with animals and children? <laughs> Would you sit down here, sweetie? Let's look at some flowers while we wait. Here we go. All right, so we're ready to board. So this is the carriage where we're boarding. Well, I can just see my signals drop down to two bars, so I hope it's going to hold on the train. Okay, we're going to go up the front and have a look at the um, engine before I board. Lee, I believe it just does a bit of a loop attached to the main train line that goes between Sydney and Canberra. So this just goes on a little side loop on a track that's no longer used. Okay. Hi guys. I've got a question. Can you tell me what year the engine was built? 19 something. 1908. <laughs> 1908. Thank you. 1908. There we go. Where is it? No plate on the train. There we go. The train driver is using technology. Do it. Exactly. Nineteen oh three. Oh two. There we go. Nineteen oh two. Thanks, guys. Oh, and where does the train actually head on this trip? Where exactly is the track taking us today? Uh, Buxton. Buxton. Which is uh, two k thousand here. Uh huh. Come back and then back and forth, back and forth. Yep. Oh, backwards and forwards. Yeah, back and forth. Great. Thank you so much. Um, no, yeah, I know. I've got to get on. I'm sure they'll wait for me. They know I'm here. <laughs> I'm with uh, the two that are already gone. Thanks. Yeah, okay, thank you. Just need to find our carriage. It's like a we're in a compartment. Oh, here we are. Look at this. Mama. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Beautiful wood inside. Yes, look. There's me. We've got some um, historical images here of Mount Kosciuszko. I closed it so we don't bump out. <laughs> so we don't fall out. Yeah. And there's um. Uh, my seat. My seat. Okay. 
Yeah, that's fine. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> We're doing boing, boing, boing on the seats. <laughs> Here's the luggage racks up the top here. Come on. And then we've got these lights. Look at these lights up here. Where's the switch for the lights? Right above your head. Now where's the switch? There, look, see, you can't reach it. Come on. 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 Come all right, I'm just going to read Dan's comment. In Canada, they have a transnational train from the 50s. They need to make, they need to custom make every replacement part. Oh gosh, that sounds expensive. Okay, the snacks have come out. You want to show Grandma what you're eating there? So, Alexis, I've got lots of people can hear you talking, and they all want a little piece of your snack. You going to share? Never. Can I show everyone what you look like? Can I? Can I show them? No? no? Okay. All right. I don't have her permission. No, 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 no. So, yes, I was going to tell everyone what we're doing after the train trip. And uh, once this is finished, we're going to head off to a sanctuary, which is just 10 minutes down the road, and it's a dingo sanctuary. Alexis didn't know that we're going there. She's going to get to cuddle a dingo. How exciting is that? Change. I don't know what it is. A dingo? It's like a dog, a native Australian dog. You know what a dingo is. I bet you change your mind when you get there. Thank you, Haywood. So we're going to go and see the dingoes and uh, we might get to show all these lovely people on this tour that I'm talking to right now another day when you see what if it's a good place to go and do a tour. What do you think? You think so? Oh, no, she's looking away. She won't let me. Anyway, I think it sounds exciting and... We're going to take lots of photos and lots of video, and I'll tell you all about it. I'll share some photos with you. I'm going to go for a little wander down the carriage and show you everyone what the carriage looks like. So here we are on the carriage. Look at the beautiful woodwork. We're in compartment 41 to 48. Here we go. All aboard. All aboard. Hi. Hi. Oh, we're moving. We're moving, yes. Oh, this is open. Okay, look. When we get to the bend in the track up there, I hope we'll be able to see the engine. <laughs> awesome. So we're actually going past the Railway Museum here at this point. what I see out the window here. Oh no, she's gone back in. Here's all the trains.
must be abandoned it's a it's a point look at the rolling the wheels over here yellow flowers along here. Apparently not. I don't know if this is true or just an urban legend. Apparently passengers in the olden days used to be given seats. Oh, hold on. They're calling out to me. <laughs> yeah, no, we can't see her. She's trying to wave to us. But oh, there we go. There's a little head poking out. Coriopsis is the uh, the yellow flowers that are everywhere, and the, the I was told that people used to be given packets of seeds to throw out from the train windows. Right, we're going to one car the rocks here. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking the same, Dan. I'm sort of, you know, pulling myself in when I see something like a signal, for instance. The wind blowing dust in my eyes. This is what it was like catching a train in India. You know, you had the open windows and you, at the end of the trip, and see if we can look out the other side of the window. Oh. Ah, here we go, look. Just so, just for a bit of different perspective. So what have we got up here? It seems to be stopping or slowing down. I can see a slight bend in the track up ahead. I'm going to zoom in. So I'm hoping that we'll see the, um, the engine as we go around this bend up ahead. Oh, there's a station coming up, Dan. Okay, great. I can see the um, steam. I can see the steam coming out of the uh, engine, but I can't see the engine itself. Yeah, I saw that pole. Oh. Those ones were a bit too close. <laughs> well, I don't know if they really were that close, but they felt close. I'm, 
I'm talking to lots of people and showing them where we're going on this camera. That was, that was, Dana, what are you doing? Okay. It's obviously going around a bend to the right. I'm going to look out the back for a second. Back out the side. Next station's Buxton. Okay, yep, you did mention going to Buxton, I think, when we spoke to him, didn't we? Check the door is locked. Yeah, good, good call, Susanna. Okay, there's the, uh, there's the handle there. So is this a signal coming up? It looks like it might be. Looks like it might be a level crossing, maybe. Let's zoom in a bit. So is, are we at the station, uh, can you tell? No, no, I've been get told no, not yet. So where are we? Look, it's very, it's a little bit suburban around here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to see, Joe. I wish we'd go around a bend on the, on our side, so that we could see the engine. We did see it um, initially briefly before I boarded station close okay oh here we go I can see the sign for Buxton up ahead there's the uh, the town sign it's a little supermarket over there our IGA supermarket there's a post box oh do you need to get to here Sorry? When you stop. When you stop. So we should be coming up to the station very soon, I think. How long do we stop for? So long enough to hop out and look at the engine and everything. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. So we'll be able to get out here and have a look at the engine. A quick sherry. Oh, I don't know where the sherry facility is, Susanna. <laughs> is this it? Okay. Apparently we're allowed to get out and walk around for a few minutes. Yep. You can. Thank you. Thank you. For about 10 minutes or so. 10 minutes? Beautiful. Yeah, they run the loco back around the front. Oh, so we'll be at the front next time. Well, the loco will pull it back. Great. Okay, so we'll be, uh, so the locomotive is going to be at this end of yeah. the train heading back. Yeah. Cool. So let's watch it, what do you call it, detach itself, unhook, unlink. I guess. So you're arranging the sherry, are you, Susanna? 
sounds good. I'm in. So. Yeah, sure. Alrighty, so let's have a look at this engine. And they go, look, you can see the fire burning in there. And I guess they'll unhook from here. Yep, there we go. So they're doing it. They're uh, thanks for joining us, Ivan. Sorry you can't stay, but that's fine. Thank you for being here. Do you see the fire in there? So something's happening over here. Let's see what they're doing. He gets right down underneath it. So I'm waiting to see them pull it away. Well, it sounds like we're good to go. Oh. There he goes, there he goes. The train's leaving us. All right, so he has to go up there and turn around. Does he or does he just back up? Maybe he just gets on the other track, backs up. Look at you, miss. Say hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandma. Doing a bit of tree climbing. Good on you. It's a little tree elf. Right, so he's going to go up the track there. I don't know if he turns around or just gets on the other track and goes back, which is, um, I guess, what's possible. So he could be coming back backwards. I, that's my guess, is that he'll come back backwards. Get Nana, I'm being summoned. She's up in the tree. Oh, goodness. Where are you? There she is. Alexis. No further. No further. Here, the train's coming back, sweetie. All right, so we have to go up the other end now. Come on down this way. All right, okay, so there it is, Get pulling in in front.
Hi, Rona. You would not like to go under there, Penelope. Sorry, I've missed all this chat. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a dangerous job, doesn't it? <laughs> Mum's saying hi, Alexis. Okay, so here it comes back again. My little tree elf will turn um, eight in February. It's a, it was a great tree to trunk climb, had lots of branches. Who doesn't have Thomas the Tank Engine, Dan? <laughs> Hi, Ronnie Lynn. All right, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Andrea. Hi Jen. You guys joined at just the right time. Hi Tiffany. All right there he is underneath again. Yeah you want to know what you're doing and trust your uh, crewmates wouldn't you? Three elfers on the train waving. There we go. <laughs> Look at this beautiful engine. All right, I think we need to get back on. So now we head back up the line. Thank you. Thank you. Is my bag still there? I've got it. Where? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I was thinking about it the whole time. <laughs> okay. Yeah? You want us to come in with you? Can I sit there at that window? <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we're getting ready to go back up the line. So here's our tree elf. She's full of bounce now. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. <laughs> It'll take off in a second. So we're right behind the engine now. No excuse not to see. No, no excuse not to see the engine. Yes, it all it goes in reverse now, Joe. I guess that's really the only way they can do it. Otherwise, you need a great big loop for it to go around. <clears throat> Ready to go. <laughs> We're right up the front now, sweetie. Nope. <laughs> this is where you told me to sit. We're going backwards? Yes. 
Before a train turntable. Yes, that's right, Rona. And um, I didn't see the train turntable at the uh, museum, but apparently they do have one that's over 100 feet. I'm pretty sure it was feet. 105 feet long. Sweetie, can I have a look at your friend? She won't let me look at it. Penelope, can I have a little look? I'm not going to take it. I just want to look. Can we have a look? Does he have a name? It's a she. Does she have a name? Coco, Coco Sally. Coco Sally? Yeah. Beautiful. So it looks like a dinosaur, is that right? It is a dinosaur. Perfect. Oh, don't do that, don't do that. It upsets my gimbal. Oh, the trees are very close to the carriage here. I'd actually prefer to be on the other side. I'm going to stand up, sweetie. I'm going to go up and stand up because I want to look out that window. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, so here we are. We've got the engine right in front of us. Look. have to come in for a minute. I'm leaning out too far. Thanks, Susanna. Look at my view from through the window here. It's an interesting perspective, isn't it, Penelope? Oh, thank you, Dan. Hi, I'm Jen. I remember it well, Susanna. Yes. Okay, let's lean out the window again for a bit. I was just checking before I before I lean. Yellow flowers just make the scene as well, don't they? Oops, looks like there's something coming up that I better get in back inside for. Don't want to be sideswiped by these things. Duck inside and avoid those. Another couple of poles I'll lean in for. I'm sure they're further away than I'm imagining.
very soothing, isn't it? Just that repetitive sound, repetitive motion. Oh, I'm going to come back in again for a second. Hold on. No nasty accidents, no, I promise. I'm trying very hard to be careful. So many train people, and I'm glad I've got you all on board. <laughs> yes, Susanna, the engine driver has eyes in the back of his head. Or a mirror, maybe, I hope. Something. Uh, thank you, Lynn. I appreciate your generosity. All right, let's have another look. What's it looking like outside again? Oh, more of these yellow flowers looking beautiful. Love a train, indeed, absolutely. Oh, we've got people on the hill up here taking photos. Let's wave to them. know about you but I've had an absolute ball this morning. This has been so much fun. All right, looks like we're nearly back there. There's the uh, museum up ahead. And we're just about back at the station. There we go. There's that train we passed before. I'll go back to our carriage, to our compartment. Here we go. Here we go. Back here. Did you love the tour? What did you think? Did you like the train train ride? No. Why not? What was wrong with it? It's scary. scary? Oh, it's not scary. Well, that was an interesting one. I don't know what that one is, Dan. I, I thought it might have been, um, it looks very similar to the Indian Pacific, but I wondered if it was an older version of it. It is a, definitely a sleeper train, yes. Mount, oh, Southern Aurora. Yes, I just did just see Southern Aurora. Look at that old thing. We've arrived back at the platform. As soon as I dismount from the train, or disembark, or whatever you do with trains, get off. 
I'll finish off the tour. I'll say goodbye to everybody, but we'll just get off the train first. Heather, seriously, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I've, I've had a ball. I've absolutely loved it. We're going to get ready to get off. We want to see the, um, the train from outside as well. So we just have to wait, wait to stop. What's all this over here? We've got houses. We're literally on the outskirts of Sydney out here, the far, the furthest, furthest you can probably get. That's a bit of a... And Susanna, yes, you saw your old train. That must have been a real thrill for you. Thank you, everybody. I've really, um, really appreciated your feedback as well. <laughs> look, look at that weirdo. Good Lord, the people you meet on trains, huh? Shut, is it? Up this way. You're going to tickle me. Don't tickle me. <laughs> All right, we're going to finish off when we get off the train. I just want to see everyone's um, comments. Thank you, Michael. Thank Another you so much. We're going to go on the small train. <laughs> yeah, my arm's tired from leaning and from holding the gimbal. All right, they're going to give us some steps. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. Pitch back down the walkway? Sure, here we go. Here we go, Dan. I've got to stand back or I'll get an elbow in the face. <laughs> Wait for the steps, Alexis. Step back, come back. Okay, all right. Great, thank you. That was so enjoyable. I loved it. All right, okay, one last look at the train. Let me turn around and say goodbye to you all. Thank you so much. Say bye to, say bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciated your time today. Okay, let's have one last look at the train and I'll, I'll say goodbye to you all. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll see if I can get up close to it. Hold on. See if you can see his legs are in the way. I can't see the furnace, but we can see some of the controls there. There we go. All right, bye everybody.